welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I want to share some of my recent pickups and a mail day, two mail days actually. I've got two beautiful envelopes from my, my friend Ezra from Portland. So I'm looking forward to open that up. No idea what's in there. But first I'd like to share uh, some recent pickups. I've got this sweet Beta Psychic Venom. And I trade it for this at the Knights of Thorn. So I'm really happy to make old fashioned trades. It is still possible. So this card in Enchant Land, one blue and one. Whenever target land is tapped, Psychic Venom does two damage to target land's controller. Now this can be really nice in a deck with uh, Icy Manipulator, for example. It's also great to put on a City of Brass or maybe even to put on a Library of Alexandria, forcing your opponent to take damage for the cards they draw. And I've, I've been thinking about maybe playing Psychic Venom in the sideboard in my deck uh, against Mishra's Factories, but also against City of Brass and the Library of Alexandria. It's not, you know, when you play Mono Blue, you don't just have a Stone Ring. You know, that's just not in, that's not an option. So it's always difficult for me to deal with lands, but I think putting a Psychic Venom on like a Maze of If or on a Mishra's Factory is gonna make it really difficult for my opponent. And I actually think this is one of these cards that's better than it actually is. I think it is, way more playable. Let me know in the comments below if you kind of think that, you know, Psychic Venom should see more play. So this is a beta copy, by the way. So I've got one nice beta Psychic Venom. Looking for a second one, by the way. Looking for a second one. And then I also have a nice play set of Moorish Cavalry. Here we go. So this is a 3-3 Trampler from the Arabian Nights expansion. It's actually been reprinted only in one set. I believe it's time shifted. Uh, that was the set it was reprinted in. And it's two white and two, so four mana for a three, three trampler. It's kind of like uh, the white version of War Mammoth, the card from uh, the first set alpha. And in white, I think it's quite good to have tramplers. You know, you don't see that often. You also have a War Elephant in the same set. I think it's pretty good. You know, if you've got a Crusade out, this becomes a four, four trampler. That already sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Than just a three, three trampler. So I think this card, it has some potential to be played in uh, in a mono white strategy with some with some pump next to it. I think I think it could work. Um and then we also have two letters. So uh, I'm looking forward to open these up and look at this. Timmy the king of ping. How cool is that? And uh, and Portland, thank you so much man. You've sent uh letters uh, to the channel quite quite frequent. Uh, so I'm not sure what, what's in here, but um, obviously I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to open it up. We've got two envelopes in total. Let's go. We've got a letter. You know what? Let's just, I'm going to open up this one as well. We're going to look at them both at the same time. Have a look, we also got a letter here. There we go. Mm, they both feel equally heavy. I'm just gonna start with this one. Oh wow, look at this. A man, a man of little words, Mr. Portland. A man of little words. We know each other through Instagram where we kind of chat a little bit about uh, about magic. Wow, this is really nice. Foreign black bordered stuff, I love it, man. I'm working on my white weenie black border deck, which is pretty close to completion. Let's try to get these out of here. It is a little trapped. Oh, and we've got we've got foreign homelands. <laughs> Look at that. Matrona da Abidia. Very cool. A 1-3, and I think you can tap it to give target creature plus O plus 3, and you gotta pay a white. Is it called Abbey Matron, I think? That's the English version. I just, this is my first Homelands foreign card, man. Thank you, Ezra. That is funny. And then, of course, we have the Thunder Wolves, a 1 1 first striker. And first strike here, in Initiative first strike. And I think this is uh, an Italian version. Very cool. Thank you. And we've got more. This is nice. This is so cool. The O1 creature. Um, oh, what's the name again? Anyway, it's one white's O1 Arabian Nights. Um, and it's kind of like the white thicket basilisk, right? Anything it gets blocked by or blocks gets destroyed. 
Very, very cool. Very cool card. Very playable, actually, in a more controlling strategy. And then, oh, this is nice. Samite Healer. So cool. I believe I'm looking at the dot. I believe this is Korean, a South Korean one. This is beautiful. And I've said it a few times already, but if you look closely, you can see a face here in the smoke, kind of like a ghost face. Wow, but these colors are really, really nice. Thank you so much, Ezra. But we oh, we have more, actually. We're not even there yet. This is a fortified area. This gives all the walls plus one, plus O, oh, and banding. <laughs> it's such, such a funny card. And I believe this was another card from, oh, not from Homelands. Card from the Dark, the Pikeman. And this, got, this has banding and first strike. So it's quite nice if you play this together with the White Knight. You can have like a 3-3 three, three first strike banding army. And here we have Grandmother Sengir, Grossmutter Sengir, the Muti, card from Hollands, and this is a German copy. Oh, look at th this card has been places, Ezra. This card has been places. It's so funny. So all the way from Portland, all the way on my desk here in Amsterdam. Look at that. It's been eaten. You, you saw this a lot back at the time, I guess because of the riffle shuffling and everybody played without uh, without sleeves. Oh, a nightmare! That is so cool. I can play this in my unsleeved deck. Oh, this is so sweet. Ezra, thank you, my man. Love these cards. This has seen some playground high school action, man. This has seen some curbsides. I really like it. Okay, I'm going to put it here. That is so sweet. Uh, and we have more. More cards, even. And Ezra, man, it's just so cool you, you sent me this stuff. I love it. Um, let's start with this one. So we've got a Sandstorm. Again, it's a, it's a German copy. Sponsalba. This is an instant. Arabian Knight deals one damage to all attacking creatures. This card can be quite nice uh, when you combine it with uh, Living Plane. And then there's this blue card that I forgot the name of from the Alpha set that forces... Uh, your opponent to attack with all their creatures. So if you've got Living Plane out and you then play that blue Interrupt, I believe, you force him to attack with all the lands. If he doesn't, the lands are going to be destroyed, so he has to attack. And then you deal one damage with your Sandstorm. So that's a really sweet um, yeah, combo that you can do. It's a bit, I mean, it's a three-card combo, which are not the best, I know, but if you can pull it off, it's kind of uh, memorable. Anyway, Sandstorm, and then we also have the Marsh Viper. This one is French, I believe. So Marsh Viper did put, puts poison counters on the opponent. So if it attacks and deals damage, it deals its damage in poison counters, two poison counters a turn. Uh, de Marquet Poisson. And of course, if you can put 10 poison counters on your opponent, they're dead. Look at the art. The snake is really looking up at you. So you're looking down seeing the snake. That is some scary stuff. And then we have the Yoshin Soldier. So Yoshin Soldier, one of the only creatures in uh, in old school that actually has Vigilance, right? You don't have to tap it to attack. It's a 1-4 for four, 3. Pretty, pretty decent stats. I kind of like it. It's one of those cards that I, that I end up cutting a lot when I'm building decks, but it is actually pretty good. And then we also have... Oh, wow! This card is actually... A, it's a good card, but it also has some value. It's a rare. It's a Tetris for 6. 4-4 four, four flyer, right? It's a 1-1, one, one, but it comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. This is a German version. And you can you can actually take those counters off during your upkeep to make little Tetra bites. This is a really cool card. Thank you so much, Ezra, for sending this over. Gonna put it there. And oh, more homelands! <laughs> this is funny. What is the real name of this card again? It, if you pay green, it does something. Put nis faikite beast zum ende des zuges. I think ende des zuges is until end of turn. And bunt nis, is it banding? 2-2 two, two, and you can give it banding for one green? I mean, you can imagine this is kind of like the grizzly bear fur that maybe he stole and that makes him a 2-2. Two, two? I don't know why it would make him a bander though. And then here in the back, look at this. This carry dude, 
I'm actually liking this art quite a lot. Also, if you see the staff, there's a the head of the grizzly bear on top of the staff. This is nice. Is this some kind of magical grizzly cloak that gives you extra power and banding? Art by Heather Hudson. Very, very interesting. It's nice when you look at these cards that you have way more attention for the art. And oh yeah, this, um, I know what it does. It's Ice Age. It's an instant. Um, I think nothing deals damage, something like that. Anyway, it's, um, it's a big horn, basically. I forgot the name of this card. Ice Age, for an Ice Age, wow. I don't have that. Oh, interesting. This is a card, actually, I think in Homelands it has some value. This is like a Minotaur um, Lord. It gives all the Minotaurs plus one, plus O. Oh. It's actually pretty good. So four mana, it is a one, three, art by Anson Maddox. It's like a Minotaur King, I guess, but it doesn't give plus one, plus one, it gives plus one, plus O. Oh. It's like a Shaman, Minotaur Shaman. Gonna put it here as well. And okay, then we have the, uh, yeah, something giant. Is it frost giant or something? Four mana for a vanilla three, three. It's like the, the, the hill giant of Ice Age. So we're gonna put the Ice Age cards here, I think. And then these are the last two cards. We got a mystery card and we've got Bloodlust. So Bloodlust one, red and one for an instant that gives plus four, minus four, Two target creature, but the creature's toughness cannot go down one. So if it's a three, three, for example, I would put it on my Moorish Cavalry, which which would be quite good. I can deal seven trample damage, but it becomes a seven one, so it doesn't kill it. You can actually play this in combination with Timmy to kill some creatures. It's quite nice. Again, it's not the best, but it's it works. It's quite nice. You can, for example, kill a Sarah Angel with this in a Tim, which is pretty cool. So we got Bloodlust and then the last card. So this is a legend, so we're gonna put it there. Boom! Oh, this is, um, oh, what's the name of this card again? It's Wolf. Something with Bat Wolf or something. This is such a weird card. It's from Homelands. Um, and you can give a dwarf plus two plus O oh, and do a lot of other stuff with it. So it's really cool in Dwarven Tribal. I think the problem is that if the dwarf dies, and, um, or if the wolf dies, both creatures die. You know, it's one of those cards that does that. So it's like, uh, they connect with each other, which I always find kind of tricky because you're setting yourself up for a potential two for one. Um, and I think that initiative means uh, first strike, I believe. But very like just weird art. And I guess here you can see the dwarves riding on the wolves and that's why they're getting this bonus. I'll show the original card uh, here right next to it so you can kind of see what it does, but I don't know it by heart. I mean, don't know all the cards by heart, but I do really love Homelands and I'm actually collecting Homelands in the previous Mail Day video. It was also a great Mail Day video uh, by Andy where I got quite a lot of Homeland cards. So yeah, maybe I should collect a foreign set of, of Homelands as well. Why not? I mean, it's pretty, pretty sweet. Right? Um, thank you very much, Ezra, for sending all these treasures over to me, man. Thank you so much. And uh, I absolutely love this beat up nightmare. Can you maybe tell me, is this a nightmare that you played with yourself in uh, in high school? I would love to hear from you, let me know. What a beauty. It's, it's even it's even more beautiful at the back because you can see that it's been through, you know, through some duels, some magic games. This would be, you know, back in the day, if you would uh, get a nightmare from a booster, it would be your your most precious possession. You know, these were the cards that could win you games, not dual lands, not power cards. No, these were the cards that could win you games, and therefore they were quite valuable. If you would be a black mage in 1993 and 1994, having a card like this, it would really be something you would show your friends. Uh, you know, you would show your friends. You would talk about it. You would boost about it. You know, this card can win you games. So. I'm wondering, Ezra, if there is some connection that you have with this card. I would love to hear from you. And of course, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate it. I've got no words. You're just sending me these cards, beautiful cards, um, out of Portland all the way here to Amsterdam. Thank you so much for that. And also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. What shall we do with the
Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.